CBS Morning News continues with Maria Shriver and Forrest Sawyer. No, this is not a scene from the movie Top Gun. It's a real Navy pilot on real Navy maneuvers. And this raises the question, is life in the real Navy anything like in the movies? And we'll ask a real Navy pilot in this half hour ahead in this beautiful scene. Well, I bet there's a lot of excitement any way you cut it. Next, the Navy's real Top Gun, one of the best fighter pilots around. Audiences are certainly getting a high out of this summer's hit movie. It's called Top Gun, and there are some remarkable scenes. For instance, this right here, you can see why they're enjoying it. Now, behind this movie, there's, of course, real life. The actual fighter pilots themselves, the Top Guns, and they are quite worth meeting this morning. One of them is with us. Lieutenant Commander Dale Snodgrass has spent 15 years at the controls of F-14 Navy jets. He has just won the Atlantic Fleet Fighter Pilot of the Year Award, which I guess is kind of an equivalent of what that movie award Top Gun was. It means that you're a, a hot rod in the world of fighter pilots, right? Well, uh, to a certain extent, yes. What is, the, what is the joy, the pleasure that you get out of uh, flying a plane? Well, it's obviously a very uh, thrilling profession. Uh, <clears throat> it's a job that uh, I, I can't think of anything uh, that I would rather do. Uh, it's uh, a very competitive uh, uh, profession. It allows you uh, to do things that uh, a lot of people, uh, the rest of the world basically isn't, uh, isn't capable of doing. Okay, now that's really what we got out of the movie a lot, was this intense sense of competition among the fighter pilots, and that each one is going to go out there and push that plane uh, to somewhere around the edge. Is that, is that a real world? Well, uh, generally, yes, if you're going to fly the airplane properly and take it to its limits. And, These are uh, some of your pictures right here. Yes, and outperform... Uh, uh, the opponent, you have to be able to uh, know your limitations, your aircraft's limitations, and also the opposing aircraft's limitations. A lot of people don't realize how brutal this is. I just asked you, how many G's? Yeah, this is, this is actually you flying. I asked you how many G's you've pulled, and that's eight G's, or eight times your weight pressing against you, which is astounding. Well, occasionally, yes, you can, you can pull uh, upwards of eight G's. Uh, this, these particular photos uh, are in the six to seven G category. It looks like you're falling there. What's happening? It's just making a low high-speed pass. This is a flight demonstration uh, for air shows that we put on to show the, uh, uh, basically, the American people uh, how we fly airplanes and what they do. Now, when you drop like that, when you're banking around like that, what do you actually experience? Well, as you, as you come around the corner and, you, and you're doing a pass like that, you're just mm -hmm. basically concentrating on the airplane, the airspeed, and your proximity to the ground in, uh, in this particular air show. And, uh, and maneuvering the airplane properly. I know one guy said it felt like his eyeballs were falling back to the back of his head. No, that's not true. That's not true. That's exaggerating. Yeah. Huh? All right, the movie says it's very glamorous. It says it's just, you know, fun, it's exciting, it's thrilling work, everything you've ever wanted. Is that the way the world is for a Navy fighter pilot? No, not really. Basically, I think if, if you look at being an, a Navy fighter pilot or a naval aviator, <clears throat> the first uh, thing that comes to mind is that uh, it's a, uh, it sounds a little hokey, but it's really a unique privilege and it's an earned privilege. Uh, we all go through uh, extensive training, and as you proceed up the training pipeline, you have to pass through various wickets, and uh, the crop gets uh, smaller and smaller. And then once you do establish yourself as a, as a naval aviator, and uh, in this case an F-14 carrier fighter pilot, <clears throat> then you have to sustain and, and continue to earn that privilege. What's the tough part of that life? The tough part of the life? Uh, well, the flying is obviously the most uh, glamorous part, and that's why I'm here today, but uh, uh, our real main profession is, is being naval officers. Well, you, I, I mentioned that you, you said something like this. It's a little boring out there on, on that ship for days at, at end. Well, <clears throat> when you're going on a major deployment, you are away from home a long time, and obviously uh, an aircraft carrier or a, uh, uh, any form of naval vessel that's intended to fight is not a, uh, a love boat or a cruise ship. So life uh, can be a little Spartan, and you're away from home a lot. You were flying over Libya? I have. I've never flown over Libya. I've flown uh, outside Libya. I was in, uh, participated in some uh, freedom of navigation operations in the Gulf of Sidra a few years ago. And some Libyan uh, jets showed up somewhere around you? Yes, I was flying with VF-41 uh, four years ago, or five years ago, when uh, uh, Commander Kleeman and Lieutenant Musinski were fired upon by the Libyans, and, uh, and they subsequently shot down the two fitters. What do you think of their flying skills? How was that out there? Well, you, you obviously respect anybody that's flying a, a jet fighter uh, <clears throat> on the opposing force. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> my personal experience is that uh, there's not many pilots around that are better than, uh, than U.S. Navy pilots. 
I think I got your drift, Commander. Okay. Listen, we respect your work. You do a very good job, and we appreciate your protecting the country. Thank okay, you, Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming by. Eight minutes before the hour, and there's another look at Lieutenant Commander Dale Snodgrass.